You'll notice today that after updating your GPA spreadsheet, item 1B at Schoology talks about providing a link to your GPA spreadsheet on slide 5, which is titled Spreadsheets. Kind of lays out some instructions for you here, and I'd like to go through and show you what we're going to do a little bit differently than what we did originally. If I were to come to the slide, slide number 5 called Spreadsheets, we took a partial screenshot we stretch that parcel screenshot out onto the slide. I'm going to get rid of that by pressing backspace and I've created some uh, blank space on my slide again. Now I'll be back here in a moment. I'm going to head over to my GPA spreadsheet. Whenever you guys update a GPA spreadsheet that means you're going to go check your grades at PowerSchool. If anything has changed you're going to change that grade. For instance suppose my social studies teacher finally got around to entering in a grade that I've been waiting for. No longer do I have a C plus, excuse me, a C minus. I have a B plus in that class. When I come to my chart and I look at a B plus, I earn 3.3 GPA points. We've put a formula in and it's going to calculate 3.66 is my new GPA. Now I'm, I'm going to undo that and now I want to talk about how we're going to uh, do something a little bit different so that whenever we make a change on our GPA spreadsheet like I just did, you'll also see it on your slide. We're going to link the spreadsheet to the slide and here's how. Boys and girls, what you should do is you should go ahead and select the range of cells that you want to go over to the spreadsheet and I've done that. You're going to go from cell A1 down through J12. Hopefully on the video you're seeing, I actually started in J12 and then brought it up here to A1. This block of highlighted spreadsheet is what I'm going to click on edit and then copy. So I've copied that block of the spreadsheet. One more time from A1 through J12 or if you do it like I did it from J12 up through A1. Over here at my slide, what we want to do is we want to press edit paste. Actually control V might work, but we really want to make sure that this comes up where it says paste table. And we want it to say link to spreadsheet. When I click on paste, it takes a moment and the spreadsheet comes in. Now you'll notice the spreadsheet is stretched out a bit. It sort of has a border like a table would have. In other words, the dots for handles. And what we want to do is we want to use those dots to adjust the size of the spreadsheet on here. You should be able to make some adjustments and move the spreadsheet so that it's in the same area that we were in before. And looking pretty good there. I don't need to make too many. I could stretch it upward a little bit and I could use the dot handles to stretch it to the right. Now here's what I want you to see. I want you to notice that my GPA shows up here. It's at 3.34. When I come back to my GPA, <clears throat> you saw me do this just a few minutes ago. Suppose a grade changes. Suppose that C minus turns to a B plus. And once again, B plus earns 3.3 GPA points, not 1.7. We see the adjustment right here on our spreadsheet, 3.66. When we come back to the slide, you won't see it right away until you click on Update. Update from GPA. I'm going to click on it now. It can take just a moment. Hopefully on the video you can see because it's a little bit small, but my GPA updates to 3.66. That's the proper way to link. What I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you to go ahead and get rid of the screenshot that we had here originally. Follow the instructions for selecting the range of cells and copying. On slide number five, paste with the link and then size it and then test it to make sure that it works. Make a change on your GPA, even if it's just temporary, change it back if you need to. And then do the update here and you should see that change. If it didn't work, rewatch the video and listen more carefully and everything should work just fine for you. Would you please make those adjustments to slide five at this time?
Next up, we're here on the portfolio. We're going to make a new slide, a new addition to our portfolio. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate a slide. I can go ahead and select everything that's on this slide and basically delete it. The title can be changed. We're going to change the title of our new slide 8 to the word posture. Posture. The way that you sit, the way that your body looks when you're doing typing. Posture. Of course, a good next step for this particular slide would be to add a graphic or a picture to it. For that reason, I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to do a two word search. Typing posture. In the images area, You'll notice a lot of different pictures related to it. Some of them are good. Some of them are not good. You'll also see some pictures in here where this is wrong. Now there is one particular picture that you're looking for and I've just come across it. You're going to see yellow, red, and blue with this person sitting at it. And we're going to take that picture. What I like to do is just click on it and drag it. We're going to drop it off on our new posture slide. We're going to resize it so it's about the size of what you're seeing on the screen here. I'm going to make it so it's a little bit less wide. And I'd like it to go from the top middle down to the bottom of the slide. And then we're going to be adding some other content also. Remember, it's going to be under these two words, typing posture. Now I've switched over to an old portfolio of mine where you can kind of see where we're going with this slide. We're going to add in some rounded rectangles. We're going to have the colors blue, red, purple, green, and yellow involved. I'm going to show you the development of one of the rounded rectangles with the arrow and where it's pointing. And then I'll sort of speed through the other four. And you should look similar to this also. We're using the same colors and then we'll uh, set the background of the slide to a nice gradient that has each of those colors in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, make a new rounded rectangle that has these words in it. Eyes are up and focused on the monitor. I'm going to head back to mine. I'm going to go to shape. And under shapes, I'm going to choose rounded rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and draw it in about like that. You may need to make some adjustments to it. When I double click, you'll see the insertion point. And this is where you can align the insertion point. You can both center and middle the insertion point. And if I remember right, it said something like eyes are up and focused on the monitor. And I know you guys are using Chromebooks right now, which is fine. You're going to keep your eyes focused on the Chromebook screen, not looking down at the keys. I'm going to go ahead and make that font so it's bold. I want it to pop nicely. I'm going to put a border around it. The border color is going to be blue. And I'm going to make that border four pixels thick. I'm going to fill it with a lighter shade of blue. Not blue, but light blue too. You see, we're going to be using a solid color and then the light number two version of that color to fill. Looks nice. Next up, I need an arrow that's going to point from this rounded rectangle to the eye area of the person sitting there. A good way to get an arrow is to come to the line tool and choose arrow. And I'm going to start here where that purple dot is and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag almost to the eyes. And I do want that to be the same color as the border. So for this one, the border color was blue. And we want it to be the same thickness as well, which is four pixels. When I click off of it, you'll see that I have an arrow there. And we're, kind of, we're starting to head in this direction right here. We're going to have a slide that's going to look similar to this. Now, if you think that when I work through and do the other four, if I'm going to recreate a new rounded rectangle each time, you don't know me very well, I'm going to use duplicate. I'm just going to duplicate one right here while I have you. Uh, click on the border of it and press Control D. And you'll have my new one. 
and in a moment you'll see me sort of speed through and I'll develop the rest of the slide and then we'll talk about the background as well. the last thing that you'll notice here at Schoology today is part three where it talks about um, Tech Ventures 6.0 icon preview and it says your Tech Ventures 6.0 icon could be used as a thumbnail and in our videos and today I'd like you to create a Google drawing about Tech Ventures 6.0 icon just so you know what the word icon means I want to make sure everybody out there knows it whenever you see a bookmark websites usually create an icon and I'm moving my pointer across different icons for bookmarks that I've set so it's a small picture that represents something and I'd like you to start thinking of an idea today when I'm at my YouTube channel and I'm in my YouTube studio and I go in to do a video I'm gonna download it or edit it you'll notice one of the things I can do is I can upload a thumbnail now this is the picture that you see when you're sitting at a video for instance right here's my video and you'll see the picture that's there. What I'd like to be able to use is, or are, some of your icons that you might design and create at Google Drawing. Also, I'd like your video, if I have some good icons that come through, I'd like to be able to use those icons in the video as the introduction for like Tech Venture 6.0 and what we're gonna do that day. So today it's not about creating the icon as much as it is creating a Google drawing and titling it and if you have time and you want to start coming up with some ideas for colors and stuff during the next class I'll share with you what the requirements are for the icon but you could start working on that a little bit today be sure to check out our wrapping up section there's always good information here for you hopefully you had a great day with tech hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you again next class mm -hmm.